I am a, a formal list uh, with a kind of informal sense of the world, but a uh, formal sense of poetry. So the uh, first poem I'm going to read to you is called As Omens Go, and it's a poem about death, unfortunately, but uh, I think there's some life in it as well. As omens go, a vulture's not a bird you'd want to meet stumbling late for class across the quad. That gray reptilian face, a homely god to hopeless men, delirious from heat and desert thirst, who worship those who eat the recent dead. You'd think it a fault of a flawed cosmos, and who could say you're wrong? You'd nod your head no more, and wisely you'd retreat. No one gets to choose the form that doom embodies when it finally appears. Some would have it innocent, a lark that sweeps the seeded field, a tiny broom, and they may hold the shape in mind for years, but scavengers glide better through the dark. Mm. Now, this is a poem about a scene I saw on a beach in, in uh, the Upper Cape. It's called Husband Snaps a Photo of His Wife on the Shore. Husband snaps a photo of his wife on the shore, but that's inaccurate. The couple might be lovers, caught out late in life, not yet or never wed. She's hardly picturesque against a mackerel sky, though sweet enough a lady, thin in a spring scarf gazing. He, heavy set and hefting a lens too large for one who's not a member of the press, that too is just a guess, stands at a distance. They have two dogs with them, border collies, Aussie shepherds maybe, dodge the waves. It's still off season, so they run along leashless, seeking their lost flock. Nearby, a pair of gulls is scrapping over a crab shell. The man could move his camera right or left and seize on new beauties, doom grass, driftwood. He holds to her gaze the only certainty. And this is a poem about many uh, lighthouses that I've known. Uh, this one particularly is in Maine. Uh, it's called Point Elizabeth Light, another sonnet. Shaped almost like the queen who rules in chess, she thinks the eastern seaboard's her domain. Her diadem of lenses crowns a brain not easily beclouded, while her dress, striped red on white, though not so fashionless, owes something to a barber's pole. It's plain no frippery will move her, fog or rain she keeps vigil, a Puritan Queen Bess of good New England stock. When trawlers haul a day's last catch to dockside, she's a sign to doubters and deceivers that a small lamplight over a dark sea is divine, or nothing is. She tells us we will all, despite ourselves, seek harbor in her shine. And uh, this poem is for my daughter, Marin, who's sitting right here. Uh, this is called For a Five-Year-Old, and this was written about seven years ago. For a five-year-old, a yellow jacket hovers near your face, but you don't notice, bound up as you are in drawing shapes with chalk. A jelly jar holds lumps of pastel purple, blue, and pink, you sample each of them. You make me think of Paul Gauguin. If he were still alive, embodied as a kneeling girl of five, he'd almost have your grace. This gift for sketching doesn't come from me. Your mom's the one who has such dexterous hands. My lefty scrawl's illegible, demands to be deciphered to make sense. Not so your simple figures by the steps. These show exactly what you mean them to. The sky, a leafy tree, 
a ladybug, one eye, a cow, a bumblebee. And uh, this is a short poem about snow, which we seem to have a little of. Uh, this is called Morning Walk. Snow fell, fell all night. Now no bird can tell its perch. Each pine is papered white as birch. Out ahead on our path, a cloud of frozen vapor cast up by a gust. Itself a snow shape hides our whole woodpile and falls a frigid dust as snow fell all night. And this poem is a poem about uh, animals that I've killed uh, while driving uh, various places. Uh, sadly, I've killed my share uh, on, uh, accidentally, I should say. Uh, but this is called uh, No Prayer But Human. It may be that no other mammals pray. Masked raccoons and bounding white-tailed deer, those luckless ones too often struck at curbs. No prayer but the human kind, and not to say those creatures sense no source or feel no fear, but rather that their every act disturbs the equitable slumbers of the day, the blank, unbiased turnings of the year. They need not speak, their lives the strongest verbs. A few more for you. This one is a poem about uh, uh, my childhood. Uh, I mostly lived in New England throughout my life, but for one year I lived in New Jersey, northern New Jersey on the New York border. And when we moved there, I was about fourth grade, and I didn't think there were poisonous large snakes in northern New Jersey, but it turns out that there are. Uh, there are copperheads, which will come out and bask on your back lawn, uh, you know, in the sun, and uh, terrified me as a kid. Uh, I'd never seen snakes like that except on TV, and uh, but I sort of, uh, you, you kind of have to take them as they come. And this is a poem about my dad as well. It's called Copperhead. That summer, my father beheaded a sunning snake with the hard guillotine of a garden spade. Its venomous head popped up and somersaulted to a dead stop beside the woodshed. Among the vacation lake towns of northern Jersey, the turnpike signpost made no mention of bramble-shouted pockets, lush as any tropics, hiding eastern king snake and black racer. I turned away, envisioning Medusa's fierce face, aspy tresses tracing permanent petrifaction across an epic afternoon, dad demythologized by chucking a tongueless S into the brush. And this one uh, is another poem from my childhood. It's um, when we moved back to Massachusetts, we lived in a, a pine forest, basically. So there were more pine trees than anything. And um, when Hurricane Gloria hit Massachusetts, 180 of our pine trees came down in about seven minutes. Uh, it was really terrifying. We were huddled in our basement, look, watching it through our, uh, the little window in our basement. But this is called Pine Needles. They will not help you sew a button on, eyeless and much too weak for pulling thread. The slightest tap will snap each thin baton in half. When dried, they're brittle like the dead cat-savage chipmunk bones or heads of mice that littered my mother's farmer's porch. In fall, I'd watch them yellowing, a meager price a pine must pay for knowing green at all. Winds piled scattered needles inches deep against our house, sweepings turned to mounds by Halloween. Some nights I couldn't sleep, I'd hear beneath my breathing, ticking sounds as points of needles clicked my window pane. And once or twice a cone rolled down the roof to plug the gutter, daring autumn rain. I didn't know it then, but there was proof, a conifer's the rarest kind of tree. It grows and dies in parts, yet never grieves. 
maples too live long, but eternity is shaped for pines in fascicles of leaves. Just uh, two more and then I'll uh, be done. This is another uh, poem from the Cape. Um, it's about uh, another animal that I didn't kill on the road, uh, but it's called Beach Road Fox. An ocean fog brings foxes out by day, and driving home, I scare one on its way to meet a rabbit for an early meal. A splotch of rust, the light's too dim to name true red, its tail a curl of orange peel, or the guttering appendage of a flame. For spotting one, it's not as if I owe more than a look, but nearer now, I slow the car to watch it disappear among beech rose bushes there along the road. A fox's only debt is to its young, in loping imitation of a toad. last poem I'll read is a poem from my grandfather uh, who died when I was 11 from Alzheimer's and uh, my grandfather's name was Albany Joseph Romain Savoie. He was a uh, French Canadian. He grew up in uh, Nova Scotia and uh, came to Waltham, Massachusetts uh, when he was young and started a uh, cabinet factory with his brothers. He was a carpenter and incredibly talented with, with uh, tools. A skill I did not inherit, unfortunately. Uh, but I wanted to write something for him because it was recently the uh, anniversary of his death. And this is called My Grandfather Whittling. Papere had builder's hands. And when he'd sing in French, rocking in a porch chair, I'd watch his knuckles clench into soft fists. It stands to reason that I'd stare at four with little mitts that couldn't hold a block of whittled cedar. It's clear, too, that my prepare was not a one to talk to children when he worked the wood with a sharp blade. A slip and the knife jerked off grain. But, oh, he'd rock and croon, I sat and swayed with the low Acadian lilt. He'd turn the block to match his rhythms as well-built as anything he'd made for pay. And when he'd catch me trying to sing along, he'd change the tune I heard. It was that kind of song. He started from scratch. Sorry, he liked to start from scratch. You'll have to take my word. But there it was, warmed between his finger and thumb. Et voila! His hands had formed a hatchling hummingbird. Thank you.